Hey guys, my name's Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. And in today's video, I'm doing a deep dive on the script I made for automating documentation in Synchro related to the license report section. So before I get into today's video, if you do want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space, be sure to subscribe. Getting into it here though, I did make another video previously kind of going over what the output of all these scripts are like. And in these videos, I'm doing a deep dive on each one just to show you if you're not as familiar with PowerShell or if you want to understand better how to handle errors, things like that. This is really the purpose of these videos. It'll be pretty quick. So this is my GitHub page where I have the documentation here. And today we're going over the license information section here. The prerequisites, I'll just briefly mention, as I mentioned in all these videos, you do have to have your tokens from the secure application model. You can find that on Kelvin's page over from CyberDrain here on that script. It basically, if you're not familiar with it, allows you to create a headless connection into all of your customer environments so we can run familiar commandlets like MS Online, Azure AD, Exchange Online without actually having to do an individual customer at a time. We can just use our delegated access in those tenants. The other piece that you'll have to do here is create an API key within Synchro and have that set up with the necessary permissions. And I'll walk you through that here in this video in the sense of those permissions. And from there, you'll need to also have your subdomain, which is just really your prefix of your domain for the URL that you go in to log into Synchro with. So with this license report here, we are basically showing a combination of the license consumption, which is showing you all the SKUs that are in that particular tenant, what's active, what's consumed, what's unused, and then also the licensed users themselves, as in who's licensed, who's not. So hopefully you can identify potential stale accounts, things like that. Within the script itself, I'll go over here. This is the script, and essentially here, you can choose to have this, this param at the beginning here. It's basically saying, give me all these values for your secrets and your tokens so that I can then run the rest of the script in a headless fashion. So if you don't actually put these in as, as parameters, as in dash, application ID dash application secret, it'll start prompting you with all these because I put them as mandatory. Otherwise your script would fail and you'd have a really bad time. So if you'd rather just define these variables in the Microsoft secret section here and have that static versus having to be prompted and copying paste that every single time you run this script, then keep that in mind. You can do that and just erase this section. The next thing we're doing here is making sure you have MS Online installed and loaded into PowerShell. If not, we're going to install it for you. We're defining our keys and secrets here, which we got from our parameters up above. And then this is the API permissions you'll need in Synchro. So there's documentation on a link. I'm not going to go through how you do that in Synchro, but it's very easy. It's a checkbox for these permissions to the API key that you've created there and then we'll have rights. Otherwise, you'll start to get errors saying that you don't have permissions or unauthorized errors like 401s. These next section here, it's just functions I created to use Synchro's REST APIs. And this allows us then to create, grab information from uh, Synchro and also look for existing documentation to update or things like that, all from within here. So we're saying, hey, use an API to get all our customers use an API to update the, the wiki pages, they call them, and the API documentation, but it's, it's the document itself. We have the ability to create new documents. We have the ability to get documents. Um, and so then after we've defined those functions, we're going to call them later in the script. We just have to say, hey, this is the parameters we take in for this particular function. This is what the function is going to do when we call it. And we're passing this information in so we can actually make these REST API calls to Synchro. The next thing that we're doing here is we're finding all the customers in Synchro. So we're saying, hey, get me all the customers that we have in this particular tenant. It's going to output what number of customers you have. And then it's going to try to grab their their domain, as in the, the, the domain that you have listed in the email address is the, the primary method in Synchro for that particular contact. So the key thing here with this one is that none of these scripts are actually going to work if you don't have that in the output for the domain. 
uh, or for the email address, I should say. And it's basically saying here, we're going to split whatever that is and just grab the later half of it. And if there's nothing there, it'll output some red text to you to say, customer XYZ does not have an active email on file. Um, so that you know that we're not actually going to be able to create any documentation because that's kind of the identifier we're looking for to map companies from sync row to companies in uh, partner center. We're using the domain. So from there, and then we were just kind of right hosting this out so that we can display that in text. It's a little bit clearer there. And then we're creating this custom object on here so that we can call this later uh, so that we understand when we're actually creating documentation for particular customers, we're looping through partner center who it should be directed towards or who it should be created for. The next section here is just simply mapping these random names for the SKUs into the names uh, that we're familiar with and can read easily. And this has been updated um, recently as well too. I've added a lot of new SKUs in here, new names that Microsoft's changed like 10 times. Uh, so hopefully they don't keep doing that because that, yeah, that gets a little annoying. But um, essentially here, we're then connecting to Partner Center with those tokens and secrets that we generated from the secure application model. And then we're looping through all of our customers in Partner Center to grab basic user and license information from them and stick them into these objects here so that we can use them as an output into our documents. And then we're saying, hey, the customer ID for what we're looking here is uh, when we're looping through this, the customer ID has this domain that equals the domain that I have um, in this particular section as well too. So we're kind of mapping them that way to identify what customer record should we go update based off of what customer we're looking at in Partner Center. From there, we're gonna go ahead and get all the current documents that we have within our environment. And we're gonna look for the name as the unique identifier because we're defining it as the same thing, but we're giving it a variable as of the license, con license report dash customer name in this particular sense. So then we're saying, if we have a customer ID, there's possible that we don't have a customer that's already created in Synchro that's in Microsoft. So we're saying, if the customer exists in Synchro, go ahead and create this body for the text that we're gonna put into the document. And we're just grabbing all these objects that we saw previously that we fit in there. And then we format the, bat, the body into HTML here for that. And we're saying if this doc exists, um, or the doc exists if the current documents uh, equals the name of what we're looking to see here. So if we see this name in all the documents within Synchro, we're gonna have this if logic here, which says if the doc doesn't exist, then we're gonna go ahead and create a new document with that customer name. We're gonna pump in that body and we're just gonna say, hey, in green, we're gonna create a new document. Else, we're going to say, hey, we see that that document already exists and we're simply gonna update it with a new body of whatever's been changed. So this allows you one to document, but then also run this periodically so that you can just simply update that documentation over time versus having to create a new document each time or delete it or anything like that. We're taking what's already existing there and simply just updating it in the platform. And to close here, this is the output you'll see there. We have our customer name, we have our tenant ID, and we have our license summary of licensed and unlicensed users within the tenant. That's everything I wanted to showcase for you guys in this video. If you do have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like I mentioned earlier, like or subscribe if you want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.